Hmm, so what is all this weird stuff? I see a guy in a magazine in the sun, and his son is all on the other side of him. I see this guy. There's a lot of things going on here. These are all contact printing frames. So they're a technology from, you know, 1850 that we used to use to print negatives. We put the negative where this image is, the magazine image, a photo negative, and then we put a photo paper behind it, and then we just leave it in the sun for many hours and then we'd have a resulting image. But this time, I think we're gonna use these same things to do a little automatic art. And automatic art is kinda just like it sounds, except you, your hands provide the automatic part. That's the part that happens on its own. So, I'm gonna take this guy out right here, and I'm gonna open it up so that I can use this contact printing frame, and we'll, we'll see what this is a little later in the video, because I have the ability to foresee the future, and that means we will get to do whatever we need to to see what that image looks like. Anyway, we now have an open contact printing frame. Over here, I've got a New Yorker, and that's just the only magazine that I happen to find. I also have this uh, photosensitive paper here. It's called cyanotype paper. This stuff is very sensitive to sun. If you hold it directly in the sun, it will start to leave an imprint. So right now I'm just holding that there. This is just a, I'm just gonna hold it maybe 10 seconds. And then I'm gonna show you in the shade what happened in that 10 seconds. All right, same thing. Let's see what happened. Hey, I know those fingers. They're these ones. All right, anyway, research cyanotype if you're curious about that. Perhaps I'll provide a video about it in the future. What I'm gonna do is take a magazine page, the back of the New Yorker in this case, I'm gonna rip it out. And I'm doing this one-handed. I think that's pretty good. Here, I'm going to use a little quick jerk. Oh, all right. Put this one away. And I'm going to put this woman right here on this paper. But you know what? I don't really like that word there. I don't really like all these things I have to read. I'm going to rip it. So here's what I'm going to do. Put that upside down so it can't expose without my help. And I'm going to put the camera right here on this paper. And what we're gonna do is rip that part off that I don't like. I don't wanna see any text. And I also don't really like this border around it, so I'm gonna rip that off too. And this doesn't have to be perfect. This can be whatever you want. I actually ripped through her head just there. That sucks, but that's what happens sometimes. All right, so now we got this. You know, I think I kinda like her head being in this, so I'm gonna keep that. On the back is another ad, and there's words on that, but that's okay. We're gonna put it upside down, meaning those words will basically be transposed upside down. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Now that I have this, and this, and I think I have one more bit right here that can go somewhere. I don't actually know where this part was. Here, haha. -ha. All right, so now we got these three bits. Let's take our cyano paper, and let's take this little guy right here. That is the back of our contact printing frame. So we're gonna put that back together in just a moment. But first we're gonna put our photosensitive paper down. And again, that's cyanotype paper. You can make that yourself. It's pretty fun. I make literally sometimes 40 to 50 cyanotypes a day because I have a problem that is just delightful. And I'm gonna put all that like that. Boom. So now, I've got this right here, which is the, the back of the frame, or the front, depending on your perspective. I'm just going to lower that right onto it. Boom. And the piece of glass and the wood are now together. I'm going to turn this around. Secure it. Oh, I did it wrong. i got to flip this. And there we go. Close it. Close it. And let's flip it and see how it turned out. Okay, different. we got to fix that. These bigger ones are actually harder than little ones to keep everything aligned the way you want just because there's a fair amount of surface area you're dealing with. So I'm just going to tuck that over. This is how I should have done it to begin with. The observer effect is actually kind of influencing my ability to do this because as I know I'm being recorded, I am subconsciously doing things differently than I would have otherwise. So, you know, maybe this is the ultimate case of do as I say, not as I do but I'd prefer no one have to do anything I say. If this looks fun, please do it. I've got this arranged the way I like it now.
Let's put that back on. Cool. I'm gonna flip it. Super. I'm gonna secure it. Now this is gonna place pressure evenly across that image. So that way there won't be any parts where it's not totally pressed up against the cyanotype paper, which will make sure everything is equally in focus. All right, now we can put this in the sun. Not much sun left, but I see a little patch over there. So let's go. Apologies to this model. If this is a, a famous person that people know, I don't mean to, you know, whatever. There we go. There's some sun. Cool. Now we're going to leave that for a little bit. Uh, a day. <laughs> Maybe a few minutes. How about somewhere in between? Three hours. We'll check back soon. Ah, there it is. I had to put it over here in the middle of the night because I realized it wasn't going to get any sun over there until 3 o'clock again. So this has now gotten about four hours of sun, direct sun. Um, this right now, just for the quality of day, it's kind of cloudy, not super sunny, but it's got some direct rays. So uh, that meant some direct light hit this, which is good. And it also meant some diffused light hit this, which is good. So win-win, really. I'm going to take it down to process it. Really, it just means rinse it with water. But we have this really nice laundry room sink here, and it seems a shame not to put it to some good creative use. So I'm going to turn this around, open it with uh, this hand. <laughs> it's not easy. It's pressurized, and I also don't want to break it. There we go. All right, cool. Take that off. Oh boy, what are we looking at? Well, let's see. We're looking at a reverse image of that girl. See, she's kind of there on the, well, she's basically in the exact same pose. You see her head is on the left. If you look on the right image with the red, you see the woman's head is on the left. That is right there, to my knowledge, I think. And uh, the other side is the other lady that was on the ad that we had to see in the first place. So now you have both things. We're going to put this in the sink full of water. All right. You can touch this. Just don't, you know, bathe in it. Ooh, not much is going to come out. It's probably going to wash away because that's many levels of ink to get through for this cyanotype medium, but that's okay. While that's rinsing, I'm going to show you what we did, if you haven't watched the, the video yet, from yesterday. So these were yesterday's cyanotypes that you saw in the contact frame at the beginning of the video. These are all just excerpts I found from the New Yorker, and then I put in those contact frames and uh, put some cyanotype paper in the back. And cyanotype, because I haven't spelled it yet, out loud is spelled C-Y-A-N-O-T-Y-P-E. Cyanotype. Cyan is a color of bluish, bluish green, but really more towards blue to me. And um, it's a very old technology from, well, over 150 years, and it's amazing. You can make it yourself with very cheap materials. I love it. It's so much fun to play with because really, it's, there's no going wrong. Anything you do, it's perfect. These are all yesterdays. And I thank you for joining me on this. I'm not signing off just yet. I'm just happy to share. This one, this paper is not nearly as useful for this medium. Uh, it just is kind of thin, so it ends up washing away a lot of the detail when you're done. That's probably what's going to happen to this. You can see there's already quite a bit of white where it previously was kind of a bluish copper. So I'm going to clear that water out. All right. Put that back in. Give this just another little rinse, but it's pretty much already clear. And even though it doesn't really look like much, it's still interesting and it definitely is automatic art. I mean, if we set out to make something new and original that we couldn't have conceived of, and therefore probably nobody else, 
I think we did a really good job of doing that with the minimal amount of effort. Let's see what this looks like in the daylight. Right over here. Boop. Okay. Well, I gotta say, it's unique. That's another good way to dry cyanotypes. You can just leave them there. It'll dry and probably eventually peel off and you'll hear a sound in a half an hour of just like a and that'll be you know, knowing that your cyanotype is ready for you. That's it. Uh, you know, stay tuned for the end of this if you want to see the developing of all these cyanotypes. I didn't put that in the middle of this video because, man, it's already getting to be a long one. So if you want to see what these look like if they were coming out, as well as some more info about the medium and what automatic art might be like in the future, according to, I don't know, whoever decides to do this, keep watching the video. I hope you had a good day. All right, so while that one's going, we're actually gonna take care of these ones. So let's pick these up. We're gonna take them down to get rinsed because every one of these is a cyanotype. And that means if we run them underwater, we can see how they turned out. Just plain old water. And these contact printing frames uh, can be purchased on eBay. You'll pay, pay maybe 20 to 30 bucks a piece for each one. Some are newer than others. I like the old ones because they're made out of wood. And we're just taking these down to get washed in the laundry room sink. Now let's start with this one. This is the first one we saw in the video. So, you know, hold on real quick. Now we got this, we're gonna put our stopper in. Cool. And now let's take our image that we have cyanotype and let's see what it looks like. I like to use my hand to direct the water since the faucet itself doesn't do a great job. You know, it's got limited range. You can see our image is slowly developing. got some running water. Let's do the rest of these. I'm going to make it easier by setting the camera up over here. Ah, eh, whatever. We do everything one-handed. It's okay. So these look pretty cool even before they're ready. You can kind of see images sometimes in them. Let's see. This one will look pretty good, I bet. Good to recirculate the water occasionally. You don't want it to stay still forever. All right, let's do another one. Hello. These are all images from the New Yorker. These are the only magazines I found. You know, they're whatever. I like to look for images that have a big strong image on one side and then on the back they have uh, text. That's fun. You can see all that part that's yellow is part that's going to become white eventually actually. That is the part that got no exposure. This looks like a good weird one. I like it. This one looking pretty good. And then how 
these kids. Yeah, they're not bad. Yeah, I think these are turning out nicely. I'm gonna rinse this, let that all come out. And then we're gonna do the other ones. Super. Try to get in the habit of closing these back up when you're done with them so you don't accidentally move one with the glass like out so that it won't just fall out on you one day and break. This is nice old glass. And so we don't want to break it. It's too nice, too old. Okay, oh yeah. So this is actually an image that I got from my local library. They just had a filing cabinet full of stuff. So I grabbed some things. I will be refiling them when I return my books and these images shortly. Let's see here. I love the first 10 seconds. It's so magical. Stuff starts showing up immediately. I have a feeling I'll make a lot of this fast motion because frankly I can't imagine anyone wanting to watch this real time. But hey, everyone's got their different thing. I know I'm living it real time and it's tolerable enough, so maybe you'll want to watch the whole thing. The Odyssey! Alright. Oh, so this one's especially cool because it's mostly red and the way the cyanotype medium works is that blue will render as a bright white light, so it'll let the most light through, the color blue, and red will let the least light through. And that has to do with the way the color spectrum is broken up, and feel free to research it further. It just means that if there's red in your image, it's gonna take a lot longer for your cyanotype exposure than if there's blue in your image. So, those are hints I can offer from my limited experience doing cyanotypes over the last year. And we have one left. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love it. Now, I already know a lot of this is going to fade away, but let's see what it looks like anyway. You just get a, a hunch about these things after a while of doing these. Super cool. I definitely know which effects I like more than others, as I'm sure do you at home. Hmm. All right. Well, that's pretty fun. So, high clarity. This is a, a very high resolution medium. Uh, I'll take it out in some brighter light. Get even closer. What is this? Kind of looks like he has bunny ears. I like it. Uh, here we go. Another one. And as I mentioned, I like to look for images with a strong graphic on one side and text on the other. I don't like two pages of text where there's text on both sides of the page because I'd really rather not give someone something to have to read. I'd love for them to see this text as backwards and not have to think about reading it. So that's, that's my personal preference. There are no rules to this and that's what makes it so fun. And I really do recommend looking into how to make cyanotypes. I think it's, it's just such a fun way to experiment with light. If you've wanted to do any sort of large format photography, you can use cyanotype for that kind of thing. It's just it's going to take a lot longer if you're using a lens or compared to a negative. Yeah, this is very dark. All right. You can see this one's 
kind of already going away. That was just a lot of content and, and built up imagery to come, come through one page. Try not to touch it with wet hands. So this is that one. It's, um, it was under the kind of surprisingly anachronistic term, witch doctors. And on the back was a VW. Uh, you know, April 21st, 1961, I can see witch doctors. That might fly. Anyway, pretty cool. Boop, boop, boop. So these are all pretty much done. I mean, you can still see a little bit of yellow in this image, which tells me it's not fully done developing. This one is, which is cool. So when they're done, you can just, frankly, you can stick them anywhere. If it's paper, just put it on a door, let it dry for a bit. Uh, I like to put them on my front door sometimes. That way my neighbors can see them and take them if they like them. I know I make enough that I never know if one's missing and they're happy to oblige or humor me, as the case may be. Oh, this one turned out so great. Oh, I love this one. So that's kind of the idea of this, is you never quite know what's going to happen with these, and I think that's the charm of it. So in a way, even though you're doing every step of the way, it's automatic art. You're really not sure what's going to happen with these. And so the fact that so much of it happens without your intervention, I think, is what the magical part is. So but that's just me. As long as we're all having fun, I'm happy. <laughs> Get a little more water here. This one's definitely done. This is on a different piece of paper, quality-wise. Uh, this is all just standard, like, sketch paper and drawing paper. None of this is specialty paper. It's just, you know, whatever you wanted to do, this was paper. You want to hang them in a diagonal for the most part. That allows the water to drip into one point most efficiently, which is good. Although in this case, they're all dripping into each other, so whatever. I'm mostly doing this for the video. <laughs> all right, well, that's really about it. I mean, we're gonna check and see the other one uh, when it's done, that won't be till tomorrow. So that will uh, be fun too. We'll see how it works out. <laughs>